Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Med Ed page. This is MSK Unknown Case 95. Here we have a sagittal MRI examination of the knee, showing some interesting findings here in the joint space and the bone. And the question here is, what does the finding in the joint indicate? Is this a case of infection, inflammatory arthritis, intraarticular fracture, or synovial metaplasia? What does the finding in the joint indicate? Well, if we take a look at the joint, first of all, we notice that there is some fluid in the joint. So definitely there's a joint effusion. And really, all four of these choices can have a joint effusion within them, right? Infection, if it's septic arthritis, inflammatory arthritis, if you're in case of rheumatoid arthritis, intraarticular fracture can certainly have, you know, blood in the joint, or even a synovial metaplasia like PVNS can have an effusion. So that doesn't really help us. But the interesting thing about this is, is there's a nice straight line here in the fluid and the fluid has different signal intensities. One aspect of the fluid is brighter than the other aspect of it. And this fluid indicates that this fluid, it has different components or materials of it because there's different densities in the fluid that is allowing layering of the fluid that's occurring. And a clue here is there's actually a intraarticular depressed fracture here along the tibial plateau. So this indicates, first of all, that there's been trauma, that there's a fracture here and this case is actually a case of a lipohemarthrosis, actually blood and uh, fat within the joint space. And we all know that a lipohemarthrosis, which we'll talk about in a second, is a marker for an intraarticular fracture. So the best answer here would be that this is an intraarticular fracture. This is not a case of infection because in infection, yes, you can get a, an effusion, but you wouldn't expect there to be different densities of fluid and certainly not a straight line in the joint fluid. Inflammatory arthritis would be a consideration, but again, we would have synovitis, we'd have fluid and maybe filling defects in the joint fluid. Uh, and we may even have erosions in the bone, but here we have a frank fracture and a lipohemarthrosis with two different densities of different components of fluid within the joint. Of course, synovial metaplasia like PVNS or synovial osteochondromatosis, we don't have other findings to indicate that that is the case. And we certainly would not have a lipohemarthrosis in the case of a synovial metaplasia. So the best answer here would be an intraarticular fracture. So now, when we talk about lipohemarthrosis, what does that mean? Well, it's exactly like its name implies, lipo for fat, heme for blood, and arthrosis joint within the joint. So there's fat and blood within the joint space, right? That, that's, that's what's occurring here. Well, that's what's happening here. But then the question is, where is this fat and blood coming from? How is it getting into the superpatellar recess into the joint space? Well, it's actually coming from the bone itself, right? Because what's the bone made up of? All bone is made up of red marrow, blood, and yellow marrow, fat, right? So the fact that you have fat and blood in the joint space, it's coming from the bone. So it means that there's a fracture, but it doesn't mean that there's just any fracture, right? It's not just a fracture in the metaphysis or the diaphysis. It means that the fracture has to be an intraarticular fracture. It means it needs to go all the way to the joint line so that blood and fat can seep out of the bone and go into the joint space. So that's why this is such an important finding because a lipohemarthrosis is a marker for an intraarticular fracture, not just any fracture, but an intraarticular fracture. And this is a nice x-ray example of what a lipohemarthrosis would look like. Notice here, this is a superpatellar recess. This is the straight line that is never normal, right? The only normal straight line that's allowed in the body is the a frontal or erect radiograph of the chest where you get that fluid level from the stomach. Otherwise, no straight lines are physiologic. And if you see a straight line, that's abnormal and it's a problem. And this uh, more loosened area is fat and this denser area is blood. So this is a lipohemarthrosis between fat and blood. And you can see the intraarticular fracture here anteriorly along the tibial plateau here, right? So nice example of a radiographic uh, finding of a lipohemarthrosis associated, of course, with an intraarticular fracture. Now, even if we can't see the intraarticular fracture, this is a powerful finding because this indicates that there's an intraarticular fracture. A lipohemarthrosis indicates there's an intraarticular fracture, whether or not we can see the actual fracture on the radiograph. That's why it's such an important and valuable tool to understand. And this is, again, a frontal view showing a split, you know, a longitudinal split intraarticular fracture involving, you know, the lateral tibial plateau. And this is just a sagittal, I believe it's a proton density image showing again, you know, the intraarticular fracture in a lipohemarthrosis, right? You see fluid with a nice straight line, should never be a straight line, and different densities. The signal intensity, one area is darker than the other, right? So indicating a lipohemarthrosis. So, and again, you can see the fracture here along the posterior aspect of the lateral tibial plateau. So really nice example of lipohemarthrosis 
what it means and how it can be helpful to us in making certain diagnoses. Thank you so much for your attention. Tune in next week for another High Yield MSK Unknown Case.